we've been on the several last lessons on right. um, this thing of, uh, well, it's, as I said, like a patchwork quilt. One thing is tied to another, and uh, and so we're, I've been talking, I've been talking, I guess during most of the talking, sad to say, but uh, about the, the drug situation coming to Hillsboro, legalized marijuana, uh, and so <clears throat> I just want to say a few things maybe that I hadn't said before. Uh, the statistics about schizophrenia and phobias and uh, psychosis and so forth, this was done by a researcher. Now what he did, he researched, programmed, uh, testing, uh, and he res researched the research that had been done on it. If you understand, he did not do the research itself, but he researched the research that had been done on it. And over hundreds of research projects. Now, a typical research project goes something like this. You take out a group of people uh, whatever, maybe age or by gender, by by uh, several things, I guess, and then you have you divide them into two groups. Occasionally, you might even divide them into three groups. One group you test what you're wanting to test, and in this case, it was talking about marijuana, the use of medical marijuana or marijuana in general. And then in the second group, you would have maybe a placebo. Placebo? Plus. Plus, plus placebo. Is that right? Okay, any other word. Uh, that was a situation uh, that uh, they gave them something. Neither group knew what they were taking. <clears throat> Uh, but they would give them something that had nothing to do with the marijuana. Uh, and then, uh, maybe in a third group even, they would have give somebody maybe a, a uh, over-the-counter medicine, which might have been a Tylenol or something. But again, all three groups, or two groups, whichever it was, did not know what they were taking. Then after a period of time, and some of these studies went as much as eight years, so they were not short term, necessarily short term. Some of them were short term. And the total results came back overwhelming that marijuana led to schizophrenia and, and the stuff that's in medical marijuana led to schizophrenia, phobias, and psychosis. Uh, all bad things. And so, uh, now, the people that you hear talking about the good things about marijuana, none of those have been done through a test, or at least from this researcher's perspective. They have been like this. Uh, <clears throat> Eugene, you were in pain, you had... Uh, did you have, uh, forget about the pain when you were taking your medical marijuana? And he would say yes. And then they would ask another, and the answer would be the same, and they'd ask 25 or 30 people that, and they would say the same. Now that's not a research study. Let's face it. Uh, if somebody's wanting to get high, and you say, did it do it for you? And they said, yes, it did. It took away all my pain that I was in. That's not a study, folks. That is uh, leveled the one way that the marijuana people want you to think about. So, okay, I wanted to make sure uh, <clears throat> that maybe we understood that a little bit. Secondly, we talked about why in the world would we want to legalize marijuana? Well, I, I came to the conclusion the number one reason 
the number one reason the love of money is the Amen. of all yes. evil. Amen. Amen. All these places, I'm going to hopefully get to it. This, I probably won't, but, <laughs> but uh, get to it to kind of give you a little idea of the money situation. But we're going to take up some. So, <clears throat> the basic reason <clears throat> why marijuana is being, hey, because the government can tax the dollar. Now, when it's in, in the field, uh, you can't tax it. But when it's prescribed and, and something that the government can have their hand in, then they can get the money out of it. Not to uh, make things better for the money situation. Now, <clears throat> I want to give you a... I want you to understand this. Within, uh, there's many things in the Bible that we are facing that are not mentioned. Let me give you two or three examples, and then I'm going to give you another. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, watching too much TV, for instance, and what you watch on TV. That's not necessarily mentioned in the Bible. The Internet is not mentioned in the Bible. However, there's a lot of places that give indications of using the correct use of your time and, and, uh, and not putting things in your mind, put those things that are pleasant and uh, correct into your mind. <clears throat> Drugs, as per such, are not mentioned in the Bible. However, uh, the greatest drug in America is alcohol. Uh, that's by far because it's been around, it's been entrenched, it's been glorified, uh, it's been made uh, a great, uh, well, an item in, you know, you, you can't go to a restaurant. I know uh, in the old days, uh, uh, my uh, grandparents wouldn't go to a restaurant that had any alcohol in it. Well, that would limit you to some of the fast food places today. Virtually all the well-known big uh, places have alcohol. So it's become, you know, very uh, out there, very successfully, I guess, in terms of making money. Uh, <clears throat> now, but alcohol is a drug, so I think we can make a fair comparison on alcohol and marijuana use, the medical marijuana, any of the marijuana use, and certainly the drug uses. So that's what I'm going to try to uh, uh, do a little bit this morning, and then maybe if we have time, we'll continue on, but uh, okay, if you take out your Bibles, turn with me to Proverbs. And in the Proverbs, let's go to the 20th chapter of Proverbs. To Proverbs 20, and we'll look at verse 1. It says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Well, I tell you what, uh, <clears throat> uh, God's word is true, and I believe this word is, is true, because it's God's word, it's a mocker. What happens when uh, wine uh, becomes a mocker? Well, sometimes it thinks it makes you think uh, that you're better than you are. Uh, I've noticed in uh, years gone by uh, that you know a couple things happen when somebody drinks heavily. Number one is they get mean and nasty. It's a mockery. They would not normally do that if they weren't under the influence of drinking. 
Same goes for drugs. You do a lot of things under the end, and we're going to see some of these things, but uh, under the influence of uh, wine uh, or drugs itself. So I think there's a, a legitimate comparison between uh, what God talks about drunkenness, which would be uh, somebody under the influence of drugs is just like if they were drunk. Uh, so, and it's a raging, uh, and there, there we see uh, people uh, uh, do crazy things under the influence of alcohol, under the influence of drugs itself. And so those people are deceived uh, by uh, strong drink. Let's face it, uh, there's not too many children up here. I guess my daughter's probably the youngest of them in a bunch. But uh, uh, I tell you, and, and man, I, I'm, I'm, I apologize in advance, but I, I believe this is true. You know, men are untrustworthy. Young boys are untrustworthy. So why do they use drink? Why do they use drugs? They use it on their friends, their girlfriends, to take advantage of them. Now that's just as it, as it is. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't know about women, but I do know about men. And overall, you can't trust a man. Now praise the Lord, uh, by being saved, that, that changes a tremendous amount. But it doesn't cure the whole lust situation in a man's heart. And I'm just being honest. So if you take, a, take offense to it, I, I'm sorry. I'm not, uh, I'm not pointing any fingers. If I point any fingers, I'm going to point them at myself. But uh, So it is. So uh, wine is a locker. Let's go to uh, chapter 21 and verse 17. <clears throat> he that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. That makes sense. Why is it? Because they spend the money on what? The, but let's go on. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. You know, I don't know about you, and and I, but I, I but I, I I I say this, and I, I mean it. You know, I I'm I'm dumb. I really am. Don't ask Becky because she'll she'll confirm it, and 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 it's true. But I'm not stupid in some cases, and so. Uh, one thing I know that of the alcoholics that I've seen or been around at some time or another over the span of my life, you know, I haven't seen very many of them that, that have, have been rich. Why? Boy, they spend it on alcohol, and then once they spend it on alcohol, they spend it on things that, are, that keep them from being wealthy. And that's just a fact of life, folks. I'm, yes. <clears throat> uh, that's just a fact of life. Okay, let's go to chapter 23 in Proverbs. We'll look at a couple sections here. First, let's go to verse 20 and 21. This is in chapter 23 in Proverbs. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall cover a man with rags. We can see the same thing, not only in, in the use of alcohol, but in the use of drugs. And if you don't uh, 
I, I think Harold goes on to the internet and sees a press gazette or something. It, uh, oftentimes, uh, if you don't subscribe to it, but over and over and over, we see drugs as a tremendous influence on crime. Why is that? Well, they wasted the money on drugs, and the only way they can get the money to buy more drugs is through basically stealing. And I tell you what, that goes through stealing from uh, strangers, friends, and family. Right. And you can, all you got to do is read the newspaper, or carefully look around yourself, and you'll see that that basically is a true statement. Uh, so, um, there's not much good to be said. Uh, let's drop down the same chapter. Let's go down, drop down to verse 29. <clears throat> Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contention? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? <clears throat> I tell you what, uh, you, you can't go to uh, the drugstore and buy, what is it, Sudafed? Sudafed? I don't even know what it's for. Allergy. Allergy. But it, but, but it's a, it's a medicine that go, it's a, it's used in, I don't know how they use it, they use it in, in the manufacture of some of the drugs out there. Now, not necessarily marijuana, but, uh, and drugs. Uh, ammonia, you know, you can't, a farmer can't leave ammonia tank out his, his field. Why? People go to steal it for, I don't know how they use it. I don't know how you make this stuff, but that's made it. We sell a product at, the, at our store. It's for drain cleaner. It has a skull and crossbones on it, and it's a product. And I, you know, when we're talking about verse 29, who has woe, well, who has contentions, who has babbling, who has wounds without call, who has redness of eye. We can tell, and there's not much we can do about it, but we can tell when somebody comes in under the influence of drugs. If you look at them, uh, their teeth are falling out. They have marks all over their face. They're normally pretty gaunt, meaning that they haven't been eating properly. Oftentimes, you'll see this, uh, there'll be a, a man, i tell you what, the man, I, I don't have too much respect for men, I don't have much respect for myself either, but I'm not even a man, I'm just, I'm not a transgender. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want you. I want to clear that. Thank God. I, 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 I'm just. A, I'm just a boy in a man's body, man. Old man's body. Man. <clears throat> but the rotten, stinking man is out in the car, and he sends this woman in, and and we can, you know, we can tell what they've been into when they come in. They come in. And they circle right around. They know where it's at. And they pick it up. And sometimes they'll get, you know, I always, uh, in a sense, like to get in a hard time. I said, do you know how to use this? You need to do this and this. And, you know, they're not interested in hearing how to use it. <laughs> they know how to use it to make their drug. Uh, but, uh, uh, 
we've had a couple say that, oh, I, my, I work for a plumber and he, uh, he thaws pipes with it. Well, you know, that's, that's not correct. He doesn't do that, and he doesn't work for a plumber, I don't think. So, things, you can stereotype, and you can see them, and you can, you can know them. You know, you can know them by their fruits. And so, drugs do not do anything for the people. Verse 30, <clears throat> they that tarry long at the wine, they that go back seek uh, mixed drink. You know, you won, and this is true, and this is one of the problems with marijuana, one of the many, there's, there's no good things. One of the problems with marijuana is that, uh, you know, they take it, why? And, and we're going to see maybe later on down here in these verses, but uh, when they're taking it, boy, they're like floating in air. They're, they're just, everything's right with them. Problem is, it doesn't last. Great, brother. And then they come down. And then, they want to go on to higher and higher and harder and harder stuff. Used to be, and I, I don't know, I haven't seen this statistics for a number of years, but 95% of the marijuana users went on to harder drugs. Yes. Now, I'm, I'm assuming, now, maybe they go directly to it anymore. Uh, the chemical in marijuana is like 10 to... I don't know, 12 times, I had it down someplace, uh, 12 times more potent now than it was 20 years ago. So the people making it know that. And so once you become high on it, you, you want to go higher. So uh, you go on in stronger and stronger. Verse 30, <clears throat> 31. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth the color in the cup, when it moveth itself around, or right. <clears throat> that's fermentation. You know, when that, when that wine is, is fermenting, boy, that gets stronger. That, that's not, uh, not uh, uh, grape juice anymore. So, verse 32, at the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. I tell you what, it's got a lot of potent to it. It's got a lot of power to it. And the same way with any of the drugs that uh, they are wanting to legalize. Verse 33, Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thy heart shall utter perverse things. That pretty much goes to the idea that, uh, you know, you can take advantage of people if they're under the influence. And so, uh, I, I truly believe that, that uh, and, and if Bonnie was here, she might contradict this a little bit, but I, I, I believe that most of the women that get started on drugs or started by some lousy man. I may be wrong, but that's, uh, uh, that's my guess. Verse 34, <clears throat> Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. Well, the top of the mast is high. <laughs> you know, when you, uh, and, <clears throat> if you were to lay up on a mast, you're doing something pretty stupid. I mean, all it would take is a big wave to roll you off. And so it is with drugs as well as alcohol. Verse 35. <clears throat> 
they have stricken me, shall they say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I fell not. When shall I wait? I will seek it yet again. You know, well, I don't want to get too graphic. The kids are coming up here, so. Uh, but just think about that a little bit. It's not enough. You may have a, a rough time, but you want to go back to it again and again. So, folks, uh, okay. Didn't get very far. We got a long way to go. So. Okay.